Man, uh So all those Royce albums you mentioned, I got a good majority of them. There's maybe like maybe one, two, or three that I don't have. But I've been following Royce since the beginning too. Um I never rivaled him with cannabis though. I never rivaled him with cannabis. I've always well, thought well, let, me, uh, let me just stop you real quick. The reason why I brought up cannabis is because yeah. when Boom came out, cannabis was at his height. Cannabis was at its mm-hmm. peak when uh Boom came out. And um he had a song called uh Kings of Kings, not cannabis, Royce. Once I heard Kings of Kings, I thought that he was better than cannabis, but he just didn't get the play he want he he needed because at the time cannabis was he was he was there. You know what I'm saying? But mm. Kings of Kings, I don't know if you ever heard that song. Uh look it up. I, I I don't yeah, I'm gonna look it up. Yeah, it's to this day it's bulletproof. He t- I ain't gonna tell you what he's talking about. I'm just gonna say, just go listen to that song, King of Kings. But that's when to me, that's when he he was cannabis was the guy that people were trying to beat lyrically because he was the best lyrically back then there's nobody was better than him nobody big pun biggie Nas, nobody cannabis was number one you know what i'm saying everybody was trying to beat beat that dude you know what i'm saying <clears throat> to this day i would even argue that cannabis versus to this day is better than a lot of people versus even Nas, biggie all of them you know what i'm saying the beast from the east that's the greatest verse ever wrote beast from the mm-hmm. east there's no verse better than that i don't care mm-hmm. <clears throat> you know what i'm saying and he had so many of them you know what i'm saying he has so many of them but that's neither here or there i'll let you go ahead man we'll talk about it more yeah um getting back to what i was saying right no i i agree with you i just never rivaled him with cannabis because i just thought uh voice was in his own lane as far as lyricism now um as far as what he just did on this freestyle oh my god like first of all it doesn't surprise me but the way he just the way he just does it effortlessly the way he just was like nonchalant with it he kept his poise he did it's so many things i was just reading from the way he was rapping that that made him that made it the delivery as far as his bars so epic you know what i mean you mm-hmm. you could just you could just tell that this is just light work for him you know what i'm saying this is light work this is nothing to him you know what i'm saying um <clears throat> as far as him being like he's in my top lyricist by the way but as far as him being the best i, I can't <clears throat> I can't really say, you know what I mean? I don't, I, I can't really say that I ever like looked at him as the top, like tippity top lyricist, Who's like over everybody. You? I, I, I can't really say, cause I never really, I never really had that conversation. I could say who's my favorites, but I can't say the guys that are my favorite are the <clears> top <throat> of the food chain of lyricism. I'm just saying they're my favorites because of certain things. But if you're talking about lyricism and you're talking about just over the top effortless bars, like what he just did, I, I don't know. Like, okay, you know so what I'm let, saying? Right, like, so let me ask you this. What, what, first of all, give you a score and then we're going to talk about that. Oh, it's a 12 <laughs> all the way. It's a 12. Okay. So let me ask you this. The, the three names that come to mind to you when you think great lyricists. And then I'll when get, I think a, I'll great get a gauge lyrics. of who you think is great lyricist. Okay. Um, are we talking about right now or are we talking about it, past? Overall, it doesn't matter. Okay, so three names that come to mind when we talk about great lyricists. We Kendrick. Okay. Uh, Cannabis. Okay. And <clears throat> Nas. I got to say Nas. All right, so you, so you basically on the same wavelength as me. Let me yeah. ask you this. Do you think cannabis is better than ransom lyrically? Do I think can- cannabis is better than ransom lyrically? 
Yeah. Uh, you mean back then or now? I'm saying like, overall, because because look, overall, the reason why I'm saying the reason why I'm saying that is because you can't really use if you use cannabis back then, he beats everybody. You know what right. I'm saying? Yeah. If you use cannabis, you can't really use cannabis now. But I'm saying overall, if you had to line them up and say, who is the better lyricist out of the two? Would you go with Ransom or would you go with Cannabis? If you had to, if they said today, we're going to let you listen to the guys today. Because Ransom always been hot. Cannabis always been hot. But if you put them on today, who would you think? Is a better lyricist. If we putting them on today, like right now, I probably will have to say Ransom. And my only reason is because like Cannabis reached his peak so soon because he was just going so hard for such a long time, right? And I feel like he stunned his growth for one, he stunted, stunned his growth when he was going back and forth with LL for too long. That's one. Two, two, right? I felt like there were certain, I felt like there were certain things that I felt like, or certain subject matters, or maybe production, or whatever, that I felt like would have complimented him more as he started to evolve. But I felt like he was so stagnant with being in this bracket that he didn't he didn't want to go adventure into other spectrums like we don't know how he would have sounded with a nas we don't know he did, how he, he would have sound. he did a song with nas yeah no i gotta check it out then i gotta check it's it called, out it's then. called uh it's called um the firm it's on the firm album yeah, so, uh, at oh, oh, I missed that. Kid, uh, up here, courtesy. Let me explain how maintain thresholds of pain. Walk around sun bare. Look, walk around on the sun barefoot, looking for shade. I rearranged. I just learned. Page. Like the I, I just learned some. I got to listen Foxy, to it then. It was him, Foxy, I believe, called Mega, and Cannabis, and Cannabis rap first. I can't remember the I name of the you. song, but it's on the Firm album. I, I'm going to check it out then. Um. I don't know how I missed that too, but yeah, it's a, uh, it's a, yeah, uh, no yeah it's a um, thorax. Some shit yeah, like. but um, but getting back to what I was saying, right? I just felt like he kind of stunned his growth with certain things, and I'm not saying he should have like you know what I'm saying, like indulged into what the industry is. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying the guy was so great at what he did that I just felt like there was there was such a wide gap like he could have just like I wouldn't have mind hearing him doing something a little different every now and then just to show his versatility you know what I'm saying because as a lyricist you could still be lyrical and put out a, a nice female record you could still be lyrical and put out a nice uh party joint you could still do so many things, but I think he just put himself in this bracket that no one never would know like what he sound what sound like if he did A, B, and C. No one would know. So, you know what I mean? That's why I say Ransom at this point in time is hands down better. You know what I mean? I'm you know, that still don't mean that cannabis is whack. I still I still don't feel he's whack to this day. You know what I mean? But I just feel like he stunt his growth a little bit. You know what I'm saying? I just feel like that. Um, I, I can explain some things about that. I, yeah. I, I mean, I understand where you're coming from. I, I I will say that I think you're a little bit wrong on it. Um, And I'll tell you why. Mm. So you, I, I get the whole cannabis stunt, his growth thing. But to be honest with you, and I'm going to shoot him some bell here. It really wasn't his fault. When he battled LL, he got blackballed. Like they blackballed. Well, yeah, I knew that. A hundred percent. I knew that. When he came back with 2000 BC was basically when he did everything on his own. The album is classic, by the way. He did everything on his own. Wyclef did him dirty. Wyclef, you know, Wyclef, when they did that first album, 
Wyclef was trying to make him like the next Eminem, but the black version of Eminem. But he couldn't do it because Cannabis is not a good songwriter. He's a good rapper, but he's not a great songwriter. So they started doing stuff that really didn't make sense for Cannabis. You know what I'm saying? Cannabis could have just did a, 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 a album with him just rapping and it would have been successful. But while Clef is a producer who wanted to make music that I would say would go on forever. You know what I'm saying? But, but people didn't want to hear that from Cannabis. People wanted to just hear bars. You know what I'm saying? And he had a bunch of songs on there that just fell flat on their face because it's like, what is this? When people heard him, people were like, we don't want to hear this. Like, we want to hear, you know what I'm saying? Like, we want to hear uh some of the bars, you know what I'm saying? Arm wrestle, uh, I, I'm my writing scripts so sick, I'll have to arm wrestle my pen to write it. You know what I mean? We want to hear stuff like that. But when Wyclef mm -hmm. took it over, he did that. Then when he battled LL, even though second round knockout is probably number two or three greatest discs of all time, it actually hurt him because that's what everybody wanted. But when LL, I mean, when um, LL kind of exposed him and said, 90, 90, your fans don't exist, that hurt him. And that's what Wyclef said, you know what? Let's make an album that's going to try to get you some fans. But he already had fans. From every verse he did, he smoked everybody on every verse. Any verse he was on back then, he beat everybody. Big yeah, pun to to uh, anything anything that he touched. It was at it was so bad that Biggie and and uh, it wasn't pop. It was Biggie and a bunch of other people were sitting at the table with him, and they said, "You the best." Mm -hmm. Literally, they told him he was the best. But when we talking lyrically, he was the best. But them dudes were artists. He was just a rapper. So you write about 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 uh, what's his name. I just think that why Clef put him in a situation where he wasn't. And then once he dissed LL, the industry blackballed him. LL, he was on four three two one. LL took him off four two two one. And put Master P, I believe, in his place. But he was on it. Like, had a video and everything. And then when Cannabis dissed LL, because they was dissing each other on the record. On 4321. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know this. But Cannabis and LL was dissing each other on that record because they had a, a, a talk about it. They said, well, let's see who the best. And Cannabis is like, all right. I said, I'll snatch, your, I'll snatch your head with the crown still attached to it. You know what I'm saying? And all that. He was saying that to him. And LL was like, uh, tell Shorty, tell Shorty the bank is closed, blah, 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 saying, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, I mean, but then LL got in his feelings because everybody was like, yo, everybody figured out like, oh, he talking about LL and they said, oh, LL got smoked. So LL went on and said, he literally, LL literally said, um, we could battle. I don't care. So Cannabis is like, well, I'll do a song. And LL literally said, no, don't do the song. Don't do it. He's like, don't do a song. And he was like, oh, you, you, you dissing everybody. You going all around in the, all around the world. They stepped coming to me. Approach me like a man. And that's when he dropped for three. He dropped a second round knockout. And the reason why it's called second round knockout is because four, three, two, one was the first round. And the second round, the second round knockout. Then LL dropped uh, this song on cannabis and yeah, he, he's, and got it was black called uh, Jack, he, not Jack the Ripper. It was called uh, Can Rip I the Jack Bus? It. No, Can I Rip Bus? Rip the Jacker. Can I bus? Uh, yeah. Yes, can, yeah. I, can I Bus? And yeah. Cannabis did an album called Rip the Jacker. Mm -hmm. So after he did I Rip the Jacker, that. he was coming at LL again. And then how him and Eminem got into it is there was a song on, 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 um, on 2000 BC um, It was a song That Eminem was supposed to be on It was called Fuck You Right mm -hmm. And if you listen to that song He's dissing Eminem on that song I know what you're talking about You know what I'm saying So 
he did that song, Fuck You. And um, Eminem was supposed to do a song with cannabis. And, he, and they, they talked about it, whatever. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. It was cannabis' fault. He started that beef. He could say whatever you want, but he did. Because Eminem didn't do the song. Eminem didn't start no beef with cannabis. He just did the song. So then that's when Eminem, after Cannabis dropped that, fuck you, Eminem came out with the Marshall Mathers LP, I believe, and it had Till I Collapse. You know what I'm saying? Actually, it wasn't that song. Was it that song? He was like, Cannabis don't want no beef with Slim. No, not even on my radar. So we did I believe that was Till I Collapse. I'm not sure if that was that song. It could have been another song on that album. Um, I don't think it was Till I Collapse. But Till I Collapse, uh, I think that that was, uh, what's the name? No, no, it was called Can a Bitch. Eminem did a song called Can a Bitch. And that song was just a single. I don't think that actually even made the album. And then he did another song uh, where he was talking about, Can a Bitch don't want no beef with Slim, no. Not even on my radar. So please, I bought my dick the day dog that joint, and I believe that that was uh, on that album. I don't believe I don't know if that was till I collapsed though. But anyway, he did that, and then they were going back and forth for a while. So cannabis kind of put himself in that situation when it came to after he got blackballed and after he after he went after them. Because to be honest with you, and I let you go. To be honest with you, the reason why cannabis truly got blackballed. Is because niggas was scared of him, bro. When I'm talking about rapping wise, so they just drowned him oh, out. I know. They were scared of him. They were scared of him. But he took the I wrong. Know. Path, I so. Yeah, I I only said that because I was such. I'm not even going front. I was a big cannabis fan growing up. Um, my my whole thing as far as music with cannabis was. I listened to, like, I'm going to tell you the guys that I really listened to, like, coming up. It was Cannabis. It was the Locks. It was the Fugees. It was Wu-Tang and LL. Those were my five guys. As I got older, it went on to Nas and Big all the way up. I didn't start listening to Big until later. I was already listening to the five people that you that I just mentioned. So it's like when when he started falling from grace, I felt some type of way because if anybody heard if anybody heard that iconic verse from him on the Fantastic Four, he's the reason why I like that Fantastic Four song so bad. The one with DJ Clue mm -hmm. on the I think it was on the Clue Minotti. It's the the beat that I rapped to that joint. He's the reason why I love that beat so much because he murdered that beat so bad. Like he assassinated that beat. He was like, oh my God. Uh, the things that he was saying on there at that time was ahead of its time. And, and like when he fell from grace because of all this other extra stuff that was going on, I was just like, damn. Like, can you imagine today's rap with cannabis involved in it? Like, what he would sound like, who who he would be collaborating with. Those are the things that I imagined in my head. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, so when I, so when I, uh, when 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 the whole comparison, like with him and, and Royce, I I just like what you said. Like, I just can't put them in the same in the same bracket because I just felt like, you know, once, once cannabis, you know what I'm saying? Got deflated. Royce just went skyrocket and just went past a lot of people. And I don't think it would have been fair to like put them two in the same arena with one another because they is just now it's just like, it's a no contest, you know, but well, we talking like, if we're talking, if we're talking words, not success. Yeah. I can absolutely put him there with anybody. Oh no, but no, no. That doesn't no, always uh, just play that part. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're right. You're right. You know, but um, but yeah, man, I just, you know, 
I hope we could get somebody like Cannabis on the show one day, because I would definitely like want to hear, want to hear his thought process as far as like it, what, what, what he would have been or who he, what he would have did if he was still like existing amongst, amongst the guys today. Because I'm not saying he never stopped rapping; he still raps. But I'm just, I would just like to hear what he has to say. About rap today and just. Well, he did an interview on Matt Hoffa show recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that. I well, know he that. Done a lot of stuff. Um, I would yeah. say this about him. Um, he is. Uh, he's a legend. His name rings bells, and the reason why is because he birthed so many people. Yeah. Yeah, so man, look. So shout out to cannabis and shout out to Royce. And it is what it is, man. But you know what it is, man. Sketch Pav. See y'all peace bye. Y'all there.